Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Jack of All Trades. So you clicked on this video, so you must be interested in installing a smart doorbell over your Newtone or m and doorbell system. Uh, I'm gonna go through this video, I'm gonna give you the basic rundown of what you need to do to do this install. Now there's two major steps. Some of you may be using both, some of you may just be using one, but stay tuned and I'll give you a rundown on exactly how to do this in just a few minutes. All right, so just getting started here, I wanna dispel a few things here that you may be, uh, I wanna answer a few questions maybe that you're looking uh, to find. Uh, first off, the, the original chime that you have with your system, uh, the one that you got from pressing this doorbell, uh, it's no longer gonna function after this. However, uh, there's two main parts of this setup that you're gonna to need to know. One is going to be how to get the back plate for this uh, so that you can convert it over and use a smart doorbell. And then the second is gonna be how you can properly power that doorbell from the existing wiring. Uh, that's a more advanced part. That's gonna be the second part of this video. The first part here that I'm gonna do in the beginning is just real simple. Uh, as you may or may not know, the box for this cover plate that sits outside your front door is proprietary. So you're not gonna be able to find it at Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that. I'm gonna put a link below that's gonna show you where to find that. I get nothing from that link, but uh, they're typically on eBay. You can find them in a, a couple other stores. Uh, the main thing you need to know about this part is you have to measure the distance between these two screws because there are two standard sizes, okay? Once you measure the distance between these screws, uh, which is either four and a half or five, at, five and a half inches, I believe, uh, then you can just order this plate online. It comes uh, in various colors and material, and it costs like $23, which was more expensive than I thought it was. If you're handy with woodworking tools, you could just make a wooden cover plate and make your own. So, you know, that would save you some. Okay, the second part of this video is gonna be, you may have noticed or you may, may not have noticed, when you took this apart, there was a speaker behind it. Okay, that speaker is not functional anymore. You're not gonna use that. And matter of fact, you're not gonna use this cover plate anymore either. But that wiring can be reused. And something you may or may not know is the voltage that comes into that wiring is DC voltage. None of these doorbells run off DC voltage. DC voltage is pretty much like a battery, like a car battery. You need AC voltage, which we can get from that head unit. So there's two major parts of this system. Their doorbell outside, uh, you might have speakers in all your rooms, and then you're gonna have a head unit that's typically in the kitchen or dining room, okay? One major part of this install is you have to find the power to that head unit and secure the power so that you can work on it safely. Now something I found was that my head unit was not labeled in my power panel box, but I was able to locate the, the power supply because it was tied into the outlets that were on my countertop. So I just secured the outlets on my countertop and it cut the power to the head unit. You're gonna need to do that first, okay? So once you have your cover plate and you have uh, the speaker and everything removed and you have the existing wires, um, you need to go inside the head unit, okay? And inside the head unit, I'm gonna show you how to change the power from DC voltage to AC voltage. All right, so let's go ahead and go into my kitchen and I'll show you that now. All right, here we are in the kitchen. Uh, you may be in the dining room. It just depends on where it's set up. Uh, we have the power secured right now. So the first step to this is simply just pulling the cover off like that. Okay, and there's two Phillips head screws on either side, right here and right here. We're gonna pull that off. We're gonna unscrew those and we're gonna gently pull this down and let it hang. It's gonna be hanging just by some wires. They're bigger wires, but it's just gonna be hanging by some wires, so be careful. All right, so there's gonna be some pretty important uh, parts here that I wanna point out here. And so let me just get you in a little bit better. Okay, if you notice up here, there is a little circuit board. A majority of the circuit boards down here, uh, some key points are gonna be that circuit board, this cover plate that leads down to the power that can actually hurt you if you leave this on. 
this is where the transformer is, okay? And we'll, uh, before I end this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the transformer and something you can do with that. But first off, on top of the transformer is a schematic that shows you the wiring for this, this power unit, okay? So I'm gonna bring you in and show you that. Okay, so this is the pinout of the wiring harness that comes out of this transformer, which is right here, okay? This connector is where we're gonna get our, DC, our AC voltage, okay? Because all this supplies up here is DC voltage. This is your actual chime, okay? And if you had this on, you could actually ground out your chime from your communications bus right there to one of these three notes, and it'll play three different chimes if you wanted to change it for whatever reason. But again, we're not using this after today. So this is where the power is coming from that we need. And these are the two leads that go out to your front door that ring the doorbell. Those are the ones we're gonna reuse. Now you might notice when you are uninstalling that front part uh, outside by the doorbell that there are four wires, okay? Two of them are for the speaker and two of them are the, for the doorbell. Now mine are orange and yellow, but that doesn't necessarily mean that yours will be orange and yellow. The ones for my speaker are also red and black, but it could be a different color. It just depends on the installer and what they use. They could have used something different. Okay, so the key to what you have to do here is you have to remove these two wires and you have to get them to take power from this, this harness right here. Now, if you get in here and you look, the key says specifically that the power on pins one and two is 16 volts AC, okay? And also pins three and five. So three and five. Those are also 16 volts AC, okay? And a lot of these I noticed need at least 16 volts up to 24 volts AC. When I tested this out, I actually got more. I got 18 volts. So it supplied more than 16 volts AC, which is fine. What you have to do is you have to pull this this harness apart, of course, with this power off and look at your pins. So I'm gonna do that now and I'll show you what to do. All right, so this matches that schematic. Now, if we notice that there's no mention of four, that four is blank because four is up here and it's blank and that's gonna help guide you to where you need to go because all the other five are full. So what we need to do is take power from one and two which one is right here according to the schematic and two is right next to it. And we need to supply that power to these two leads. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that, all right? First off, this is very low voltage, okay? As a matter of fact, inside this cover is high voltage, which is, is the same amount of voltage you'd find in a normal outlet. If you were to open this up with it still powered on, as long as you aren't reaching into here, you should be pretty fine, okay? Because the voltage that comes out of this transformer is only 16 volts. That's not gonna kill you. It's not gonna probably even electrocute you. It might, you may not even feel it. So it's very low voltage. Just keep that in mind, okay? So we wanna take power from this harness and take it to the doorbell out front. There's a couple ways, okay? You can either cut these two wires, this blue and this red one, you can cut them and uh, pull back the wiring and put two, two um, lock nuts in here wire nuts, and then also wire these two into it, okay? It doesn't matter the orientation. You can have the orange on the blue or the orange on the red and the yellow, it doesn't matter, okay? You can wire nut it in, or you can cut these two wires, of course, with the power off again. You can solder these wires into it and then shrink wrap it. That would probably be the best way to do it. Uh, the, the, another way that would get this done that isn't probably gonna be the best way, but it'll get it done, is you could simply bend these wires and shove them into this connector, one and two, tape it up, okay, so that they're shoved in there, maybe run a, a loop of uh, electrical tape around the base here, and then just plug it back in, plug the other harness back in, the other end of it, and it'll hold it it'll hold it together like that, okay? So I'm gonna do that real quick off camera right now and I'll get back to you and we will discuss some more of this. 
All right, for some reason I lost the audio to this part of the video and I just wanted to point out here that I'm showing how the copper wires go into the actual wire harness. Uh, you just bend them down and shove them on the outside of that interior cylinder. Do not put them in the inside of that, that cylinder because they will then impede the, the pen from the other side to go in. But just shove them on the outside and then close it up and it's all secured there with the tape so it should not be going anywhere. All right, so I just want to jump in here real quick to point out, I did decide to go ahead and switch to pen three and five instead of one and two. Pen five is at the top middle on this diagram and pen three is at the bottom left. Uh, one and two were not giving me a consistent reading, whereas three and five were giving me consistent readings. Uh, good power. So this is what it ends up looking like. Uh, the harness has these two chime wires going into it. Uh, they're they're kind of shoved into each one of uh, pen three and five. And also, if you'll notice here too, this, this harness actually has the numbering for the pins. It makes it easier to see. So um, I have it secured with some tape and then the wires are actually crammed in there uh, and, and kind, of, um, kind, of, kind of actually stuck between these two, harness, these two connectors. So they're not gonna go anywhere. But let's go out front here and see what we have as far as power out by the doorbell. All right, here we go right here. Got my alligator clips plugged into the two wires coming out of the front. Got those clipped into my multimeter. And what do we got? 17.8 volts AC, just where we need it. All right, so if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you watching the entire video. I promise to not make it very long. Uh, I do encourage you to hit the subscribe button, like, that helps my channel out a whole lot. But anyway, I appreciate your time. I hope this is an easy install for you now that you have this information. Uh, if you have anything that you are stumped on, just put some comment below and I will definitely answer, okay? So anyway, take care and goodbye.